My name is Patrick Shomo. I'm from Maryland Shell Issue. For the record, you'd have been luckier if the lights were left off. I'm short, I'm bald, and the glare is going to get right in your eyes. So what is Maryland Shell Issue and who are we? Maryland Shell Issue is Maryland's organization. By our name, you can pretty much figure out what it is we're doing. Uh, we have roughly 10,000 contributing members and probably about 20,000 associated members. We're a rapidly growing organization. We sit at the nexus, of course, in Maryland, where we have this interesting state versus federal. I mean, we literally have good portions of our territory and our people inside the Beltway. For those who haven't lived there before, it's kind of a frightening experience at times. Everybody on the state level wants to be on the federal level, and everybody on the federal level is pretty much kissing to the state level. It's really quite an interesting thing. Maryland is kind of an exciting thing in the gun rights movement right now. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of with the Second Amendment Foundation and what they've done nationwide with lawsuits with Mr. Alan Gura and other good select local counsel. Well, as it turns out, Maryland is the first state in the nation that at least has a federal judge who has said, we're going to force you to go shell issue. Now, we're currently on hiatus. We'll be on hiatus for probably the foreseeable future. But it was an exciting win, and it did galvanize a number of things at the state level. I think there are some lessons coming out of Maryland that are going to apply, I hope, very soon to places like California, New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts. I've had the pleasure, actually, of growing up in New York, living in California for good periods of my time. I'm in Maryland. My wife says if I have to complete the axis of evil, I should be going to New Jersey and Massachusetts next. The... Um, Quickly, what I wanted to do is, you know, Maryland is still a discretionary issue state. Uh, prior to Woolard coming down, which is the case that the, the, the federal judge just went ahead and decided, we actually have not been, MSI, along with some other folks in the state, have prevented a gun control law from going into effect for quite some time. As a matter of fact, we actually pushed civil immunity two years ago. We teamed with the Megan's Law folks. So what we do is we actually, our level of a success in a, dem in a democratically led legislator, and a place where our governor says it's a progressive wonderland, and that's what he wants to build, is we actually have to reach out and team with as many people as we can, plus bring as many of ours to bear as possible. We've instituted a number of tools. Um, one thing we do is we reach out with, say, the Megan's Law people to push um, corollary legislation with each other and amendments to bills. Civil immunity was one of the things we were able to do with them and push forward. Um, we're one of the few states now that actually have a civil immunity law, especially among the May issue uh, denizens. Now, Woolard did a couple of things when it came down just in March. It frightened a number of people on the gun control side. It also galvanized action on our side. One of the things that we saw in the last session, and, and it's, it's an anecdote and a lesson, I think, for other places, is we had a, a reaction in our state legislature. Our General Assembly was convened at the time. And what we had were the typical cohorts that we have on the gun control side within the legislature who at the very last minute schemed to put together this great conspiracy and they all worked behind the closed doors and it was an interesting story I'll bore you with later. But the end result was they took a law enforcement bill, put it in the Senate Judiciary, gutted the entire thing, every letter out of it, rewrote it as a training bill for concealed carry. What that means is that you are going to pay $500 to stand in line for a class that the Maryland Police Commission was going to create, some political commission. Essentially, they were en enacting a significant hurdle to carry. They put this right before Easter weekend. We have a very specific set of laws in Maryland that say that we have to convene our General Assembly at a very specific time. You cannot go over. They snuck this thing through. It was pre-approved, governor on down. Within one hour, Maryland shall issue started a rampage of, well, let's just put it this way, we had over 350,000 individual citizen contacts on our General Assembly. We're not talking form letters. We're talking about individually written emails, phone calls, visits, door knocks at the Capitol. And this happened during the session. We, according to the Senate, we melted their systems. And they said, no more gun control. We can't do this. The words were, they're melting our capital. So what we did is we kept melting it, we kept melting it, we kept melting it. As a matter of fact, we melted it so good that they couldn't raise any taxes because we kept locking down the Judiciary Committees and all the other committees with our motions to re recommit. They couldn't pass taxes. The governor had to call a special session several months later to raise our taxes. Yay. Um, 
Well, it also opened doors at the Maryland State Police. So lesson one, I think, for, for other states, things we have found successful is automate your tools. Every single one of our members and associates can actually get an instantaneous contact to say you are needed right now. It's on their cell phones. It's in their emails. It's not just on a web page. That right there, immediately within an hour, we started melting those systems. Lesson two, reach out to your state police. Reach out to your issuing authorities. We have had great success. The entire time between Woolard and the time that the court actually said make it happen, we actually worked with the state police. You know, They see the writing on the wall. They know where this thing is going. They're trying to become neutral arbiters of what this thing will become. Secretly, we are working in the background with them, creating a new application process. And right up until the last moment when the judge issued a, a final stay, uh, they were getting ready to issue several hundred permits on the first day. In their words, our laminators are warming up. We're going to issue them the moment the judge tells us to. These people don't want to get sued again, so thank you again, Second Amendment Foundation. Our upcoming session is going to bring a couple of things. This is going to be the last push for gun control, I believe, in Maryland, the last serious push. We've already seen a couple of things. Training. It's going to come back. They're going to keep pushing this as a, as a bill. We're working with the Maryland State Police to come up with what we think is a sensible training regimen. Maryland right now is an open carry state if you get a permit and has no training requirement. Now, I am not in favor of enacting reg regulations where they don't need it, where we don't have them right now. However, the practical reality is, and this is something at the state level we recognize, at the practical level, Someone's going to put training in place. The question is whether we write it or whether they write it. We're working with the Maryland State Police. We're working with other interested law enforcement agencies to go nationwide to teach them what has worked in places like Florida and Virginia. And we're teaching them what is going to work within Maryland so that we can go ahead and prevent training from becoming a significant roadblock to the people. And in the future, we're doing things such as when we are forced into shale issue, we're going to be pushing roving gun clinics. We're going to be teaching people how to apply for these things. We're doing live scan on site. Um, again, other lessons. Thank you for your time today. I, I do appreciate the opportunity to have Second Amendment Foundation in our corner. I'm going to put this back because the next person is going to be taller than me.